Hey everybody and welcome to day nine of Have a Look Great in Pictures. Once again, this is Ashley Brockington with Losing with Sam and Ash and Leader of Team Thrive. Today I want to teach you how to edit your pictures from your phone. Now all the tips that we've gone through so far have been to how to take great pictures in camera. That's what professional photographers will say, get it right in camera. Basically, that means don't depend on an editing software to, you know, be what makes the pictures look good. You shouldn't need lots of filters and fancy things. You need to learn how to make the pictures good in camera. Having said that, once we get them great in camera and we're feeling good about ourselves, why not take them up to another notch? So that's what I'm going to teach you how what to do. So first of all, my phone is disorganized, but what I do have organized are my photography apps and my video apps. So you can see these are my photography apps. So let's go through just some basic photo editing. Today I'm going to show you two apps. Um, they both do basically the same thing. One is Afterlight and the other is ViscoCam. Afterlight is my favorite right now. So if you download Afterlight from the iTunes store, I'll let you pause right now, go do that. Okay, and so then what you're going to do, if you want to take a picture, then you will pick the one that looks like a little Instagram camera, and if you want to pick a picture that you've already taken, which is what I usually do, you'll do the other one. So let's take a picture of myself. So I took some pictures, and they were inside, not great lighting, let's see, but decent. So let's pick I'm gonna kind of show you between, you can see I've got some right here closer to the bottom that are closer to a window, brighter, cleaner lighting. So let's pick one of those and just show you how it looks if you're going to clean up a picture that already has better lighting. Go ahead and push use. And then this is basically my recipe and what I do, but I'll show you all the functions. The little slider bars, that's going to be your basic overall correction. So the first one is this little magic wand thing and that's going to let it clarify it and that just basically means let dark parts get darker, light parts get lighter. I think it's a little scary Skeletor looking. I don't want that. But I always like with my pictures is I like to brighten them up a little bit so that's the sunshine. So I'm just going to take it up just a little bit. I don't want to get it so high that the highlights start to get blown out. I still want to have definition and you can see that's if you wanted it darker. It's a lot harder to, you know, make something that's blown out look darker. Um, maybe about right there. So if you tap on it, this is me tapping the screen, you can see what it looked like before and after. So you can see that's a little bit better. The next thing I like to do is this looks like a half moon. I like to up the contrast just a little bit. I, you can tell like this to me looks amateur, and I see people that are doing that just slide up the contrast. You would never see a professional photographer do that much contrast. So I just take it up just a little bit because I just wanted to have a little bit of edge. And then a lot of times I'll go back to brightness and I'll brighten it up just a little bit. And basically I just want to have like that good balance of having it a little bit bright with a little bit of the sharpness. Okay, so let's let's just go through the, the different parts and what they mean. So the next one is colored one. Saturation, I would never use this. Once again, that looks really amateur. I just think too much saturation does. I also think when it's like kind of a little bit like that, that kind of looks like, I don't know, vintage, but also kind of in an amateur way. Of course, black and white, you can do that, but there's also some black and white filters. So I'm gonna X out of that. This one right here is exposure. So that's kind of like the brightness, but you can see the difference in this is it doesn't just affect the highlights, it also affects the shadows. It's getting them brighter. So that's actually not a bad option at all too, instead of brightness. It's just sometimes people, if they already want the contrast, then why take it out by upping the overall exposure? Next is highlights, and so that just means we're going to just affect the highlights. So you can say my highlights are, you know, whatever hits the sun first. So that's why those places are there, because they're the bones, like the nasal bone, and my forehead, and my cheekbones that are hitting the sun the most. And you can see if I go like that, that basically you can use it if you go down as a highlight recovery um, for things like skies or that kind of thing, or if it was really blown out. Shadow is just going to be the opposite. If you've got really dark 
areas. You can see my hair I'm darkening the shadows, and that doesn't look horrible. And then that's taking the shadows out. So if you, you're, it's a really, really dark picture, and you know, you you might want to recover some shadows. I don't use that a lot. Next one is fade. People, this is kind of like an in look. This faded look is kind of boho hipster. Um, so you can use that if you want. And then these ones I actually use a lot. It has the red, blue, and green, and it's H, M, and S, and that's highlight, midtones, and shadows. So if I go to the highlights, it's basically saying, how much red do I want in the highlight? So red, the opposite of red is green. So if I go down and take out red, it's going to give me green. And so the only reason I would do these is if I felt like, I can also go to the blues, if I felt like my highlights or midtones or shadows had a little too much of any of these colors. Blue, the opposite is yellow. So if I take the blue out, I'm going to get more yellow. A lot of times pictures indoors are going to, because indoor light is more yellow, it's going to give you more of a yellow tint. Um, and so a lot of times I will use this and I will take out some of that yellow from the midtone. So once again, we can kind of see um, what we've got going here. Midtones, you can see too. If you are under a tree or something like that, then you will get some green cast. And so you might want to take some green out of different areas. Okay, this next thermometer is the temperature of the photo. And the warmer, the higher the Kelvin is how it's measured, the higher that number or the temperature of the picture, the more yellow it is and the lower, the bluer it is. And so you can think of it like sun, heat, yellow, and then ice, you know, you think of being blue. So if I go up, it's going to get more yellow. I go down, it's going to get more blue. And so once again, I wouldn't use this as like a toning effect. I think it looks amateur, but if you have a little too much yellow and you want to take the tone down and neutralize it, really I like to neutralize my photos. And so these are just kind of basic. You can see I'm not, once again, I am not like trying to go and take out any wrinkles or anything like that right here. The next one is a vignette. A vignette just means kind of darkening around the edges. I don't use this a lot. It's kind of a dated technique, but let's say you have really distracting, ugly things that are dark anyway around the edges, you could bring them in just a little bit, and so it's going to bring focus into the middle, but I like to keep things as light, bright, and white as possible. I do wish I would have moved that pink tray in the back. The next one is grain, and the reason I would put grain is if it already was kind of grainy, fuzzy, bad picture, sometimes adding grain is kind of like, oh yeah, I did this for a reason and it also can give that kind of vintage-y look too. And then this last one, that's a little triangle, is sharpening. If you over sharpen, I think it doesn't look the best, but then here's if I blurred it a little bit, and some people do that to soften um, wrinkles and that kind of thing. A lot of times I sharpen just a little bit. I just want it to have a clear type look. Okay, so this is what I would consider like a baseline photo. And so before, I didn't think this was that bad. If anything, I would warm it back up just a little bit. So you can see kind of where I went with that. Now let's go to the other functions if we're looking at the bottom row. And these are just fun to play with. This is not like you have to do this to your picture. This next one that looks like a colorful rainbow circle, these are the different filters. So if I want to use black and white, a lot of times I use these black and whites. So you can just see. And once again, I just am really careful about not wanting it to look amateur. Like this one, it's just a little bit too saturated, too contrasty. I feel like the way I want to edit pictures are, like I like this, I like it. I don't mind it having a little bit of a filter and kind of a look, a tone, you know, like a brand that goes with your brand. But I always think, well, I regret this, you know, a year from now. Am I gonna be looking at Facebook or whatever? Let's say I want to print a book out. Or like today I had somebody ask for pictures from my kids if I had any pictures of their class from last year for the yearbook. And like, do I want to give them a toned picture that I've edited, over edited? You know, you don't. You want it to, it's okay, like I said, if it's going to enhance it, but you really want to, or it's going to go with the overall branding look, but you want to think about leaving it a little bit, you know, natural. Most of the time, maybe not. Who am I to say? This is your thing. I'm showing you how to use the app. Okay, so here's another set of ones. This is one of my favorite ones. And so a cool thing about this too is you can lower this. So I like this one because I like the blue. It kind of keeps blue and the yellow in there and I can kind of take it down a little bit. So I like that. I'm just going to keep showing you a couple of these. I don't think that one's bad at all. 
And actually that's not, that's kind of cool too. So there's a ton of these. You can play all day. What I suggest is if you're going to be using these on social media, pick a couple. I like that. That kind of has the yellow and blue too. Pick a couple that you really love and stick with them. There's these film looks. And so sometimes if I have a picture that is outdoors and I don't know, just I'm not totally feeling it. It captured the moment, but it's not, it doesn't have the aesthetic that I want. I will do these light leaks, that, these film things. And so I'll use the light leaks one. And what you can see it does is it adds almost like, you know, kind of a vintage camera would let in some light when you're using a film camera. And I will never use them full force. Instead, what I do, I like this one a little bit. And you can also flip these around or you can flip them like that. So I do like this, and, but like I don't want it to look like there's a rainbow coming in my head, unless it's your brand, brand. But if I want it to look natural, I think I can still, I could add that in and lower it. You can see how I'm lowering it. And it almost looks like there's just, you know, some glare from the back. So let's look what I've got right now. It's not even taking me to the original photo. It's just taking me to before. And you can push yes. Okay, so here's, here's where I've got. So you can see, and I remember this was my well-lit picture. So you can see how I've just like taken it a bunch of different notches. Yay! Okay, the next one is the crop function. And this is great for Instagram or for straightening. So let's go to crop. And a lot of times I use Instagram and I wanna see what it looks like before. So I will go to the square crop and I will figure out how I like it. And you can crop in like that, pull it out. And I will say, let's talk about cropping for one second. A lot of times people, when I was you know, a photographer, they like we would crop it say right here and they would be like part of my head is cropped off and they would not like that well here's the deal if you crop it if you don't have a lot of room and you are going to move it up what's better people don't realize this is it you this way what it looks like is your head is on a plate because it's cutting you off at a joint and it looks like your like head is busting out of the top of the box. So some rules are you don't want to crop at joints. So you don't want to crop right at the neck. You don't want to crop right at knees, wrists. You don't want to look, have anybody look like they've lost, you know, limbs or been decapitated. So that's one. The other rule is that you don't, like you want to make sure that people, that the crop isn't right like that, like right to where the top of my head is like right there. And also you don't want I mean, I took this picture so there wasn't a ton of headroom, but it's better if you're going to crop, it would be better to move this down a little bit so that I have more room on my neck and to crop, you know, right here. Now, if I crop here, it it's like, is she bald? Does she not have any hair? So it's more about what information you are giving and, you know, where how the mind's going to fill. And I wouldn't crop this far in, but if I was going to do a close crop, I would do it like this. So I would show some hair, enough to let you know there's hair above my hairline. I do have a hairline and not so much that I'm a head on a platter because people know that I have their minds fill in the blanks that I, there is a top to my head. Okay. They know that. Whereas your mind doesn't always tell you that there's more hair there. Same thing like with this, like th anyway. Lots of rules with cropping. The other thing is if you are, let's say I was facing profile to the side, and if there was going to be more room on one side, it needs to be the direction that you were going. So if my face was towards the right of the screen and my nose is pointing to the right, I want more space over here on the right because it's called nose room and it gives the mind the signal that that is where the person is headed. Whereas if you put it on the opposite side, and the nose or the action is facing, you know, to the right, but then there's more room on the left, then it makes the mind think that they're going to run into this imaginary wall. So you don't want that. All right, so that's cropping. And there we can flip the picture around. Let's say I took it, up, took it upside down. We can mirror it. It's always weird to look mirrored. You're like, wow, my eyes really aren't even. Is that how people see me? Or do people see me like this? I always wonder that exactly what view of me are people getting this is you know vertical and then this would be if you like if you're taking a picture and there's a tabletop or something like that and it matters that it's even or the ground this is how you would even it out you can take pictures or crop them on a tilt like this it's called a dutch tilt 
it also can be overused sometimes, but it's also like pretty effective a lot of times. All right, and do that one. Yep, this one right here. Honestly, I've never played with it before. Whoa, this is scaring me now. Okay, looks like I'm going to have a pizza face. All right, well, isn't that beautiful, folks? Now I have eggs over my face. So this looks like it's an over. <laughs> It's an overlay, and I do not want that, but that totally could be interesting if you wanted to do that. And the last thing is these crops. Let's see what they're all are like. And this is back to where we were. Okay, so when you finish, here I undid all of that work. When you finish, you're just going to push done, and you're just going to choose if you want to save it small, medium, or max. And I totally suggest with any type of app, you save it to the camera roll. So small, if you're just doing social media, you're like, yeah, this picture's never gonna end up anywhere, doesn't matter, just choose small, why not? If you think that it might ever be printed out, you might get one of those books that you really like to have them printed out, or you might want it as a larger picture at some point, Some like this is kind of gonna be an archival source if you post it to social media or on your phone, then save it medium or max. Otherwise, just social media, one time, you can save it as small, and then you're just going to click camera roll. The reason I don't suggest saving straight to Instagram, Facebook, share anything is because it usually says something like, this picture was posted by Afterlight. And then you've got this border. It makes like, oh, hey, everybody, I edited this picture. It's basically advertising for the app, which these apps are great, but that's not really what we're going for. Okay, so there are lots of other apps to make graphics, cool pictures, and I will teach about those in another academy that I do. But for right now, we are just focusing on basic photo editing. So this other one is ViscoCam. And let's see, here's some food I took a picture of. So let me show you in ViscoCam how I would maybe edit a picture. So let's take a picture of this broccoli soup. And then I am going to pick these little tools. And then it's, it, what it does is it's preset filters. And they're film filters, and they're, they're really nice. They're very, very nice. So you can see like that one kind of has a vintage look, and I like that a lot. So if I wanted to change it a little bit, you see I kind of pulled this up. Then I could up the exposure just a little bit like that. Okay, and then I could up the contrast just a little bit. So a lot of these, I mean, they're basic tools, and they're going to be the same. So you see, this is the shat highlight save that we kind of talked about before. See how it kind of grays it out. There's the shadow save, the temperature. Remember, lower is bluer, higher is more yellowy. Uh, this is for skin tone. So if we needed to save some skin tone. So, I mean, this is a really, really cool tool. And now that I'm kind of back in here, I might be playing around with this more because it's super fun. And it looks like if you push here, you can get rid of go in and adjust it more or throw that one away. So this is actually has a lot more features since the last time I was in here and I probably will be playing around with it more because it does have that professional tone that it gives pictures. And of course, you can crop it. So like I would crop out that little side reflector part. All right, and then now I've got it going on. To save it, I'm gonna push this up arrow and I am going to save it, like I said, to my camera roll. And that's about it. So then if you go back to your photos, you should be able to, that was moments, let's see, albums, camera roll, here we go. So there we go. So I hope this has helped. I'm really excited for you all to use these tools. Like I said, there are so, so many apps that you can use to edit your photos. But the goal I think we want is the most natural, clean looking. We, we want to start with a really professional base. And once you have a professional base, you can make it your own brand, you can add graphics, that kind of thing. But you can't, sorry about the little spin, you can't do the opposite, or you can, but it's not going to be good. Like it's going to be harder if you make these cool graphics and then you get to a point where these photos aren't really good. So it's always better to start with more skill, like simplicity, making it clean. This is lesson nine for how to look great in pictures. Once again, I'm Ashley with Losing with Sam and Ash, and I will see you tomorrow for day 10, the last lesson in Losing It with Sam and Ash.